so it's finally time now to check out the project lawns that I was working on last year. If you're new to the channel, you might not know about everything I was doing with those project lawns, but that's what we're going to recap a bit today, explain sort of the program that I used, and then you can go look at exactly what I did and sort of replicate and get your plan going if you want to follow kind of the steps that I did as well. So let's go to the first project lawn at my neighbor's house. Man, what a trip. All right, so that's just my attempt at humor for the day. I've always been wanting to do that when I talk about this neighbor's project lawn. So I don't know about you guys, but those are some great results in only a year's time. This has only really been a few inputs over last year, and we just made sure to do some key things, some crabgrass prevention, which was kind of an issue in this lawn before. That's been taken care of because of our prevention work there, and then that allows all the rest of the grass to really thrive if you're mowing it properly, putting down the fertilizers at the right time, and that was really all that we did. I did one blanket application of some weed control early on. Any stuff you could get anywhere at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. And then from then on, we've just spot sprayed a couple of little spots here and there. And there are a few weeds, as in any yard, nothing is completely perfect. I have some areas of my yard still, I'm dealing with some clover, different things. So nothing's gonna ever be completely perfect, but really from where we were before to where we were now, it's quite a transformation. So a couple of things I want to point out of importance, especially here, has been the mowing. This year, my neighbor has been mowing this probably every other day or every three days for sure. Everyone's been home and kind of looking for something to do during maybe a lunch hour or something like that. But he's really been doing the work and putting in the time to mow and mow properly. And that way you're not cutting off much grass and you're not stressing things out. Now last week we had temperatures of 90 to 95 for about seven days straight. This is facing the west sun all day long, so that's difficult. He has no irrigation at this point. We did do a bit of watering last week to water in the second prodiamine application that we made for crabgrass. So we did do that. But other than that, this has looked so much better and less stressed this year, even without irrigation. All right, so I wanted to show you one area where, again, it's important to make sure that you have grass cover on everything possible. Because any of the areas that we have really good grass cover, we're not really seeing much for weed problems because the grass is thick enough that it's shading out most of those weeds or it's out competing them at that point, and that's exactly what you want. But anytime you see an area like this, or a more bare area is where weeds are going to invade much more easily. Got some dandelions going on here, and this, a lot of people would come and say, oh, it looks like crabgrass, it must be crabgrass. No, it's actually nut sedge. That's something that your prevention is not really going to take care of. And in terms of crabgrass though, I'm starting to see it pop in a few lawns around my neighborhood. It's about that time for soil temperatures and I have not seen any in this yard again. So we've done our split application of crabgrass prevention. It's a key thing in making sure, especially on a yard that's just getting started again in terms of really paying attention to it, that you get that crabgrass prevention done so that you're not competing with that in the summertime. Now we've come to the point where my neighbor is definitely becoming a lawn care nut and he's getting the bug and he's wanting to do some more work. Now for a lot of people, if you could get your yard to this point, I think a lot of you would probably be happy with that. But my neighbor and I were speaking a little bit about maybe doing some renovation work here and I wanna show you why certain things happen here where you're gonna get your yard to a point where it needs a bit of renovation to improve it. You got a huge just patch of tall fescue here. It's just a big clumping fescue. So it doesn't match the rest of the grass. Not a huge deal, but if you want everything to look uniform, I would probably try to remove that later and we would reseed that. Now, I don't know if this is gonna show on camera or not, but hopefully you're going to see 
the sort of lack of consistent color here and basically that's going to happen just because whatever mixture was originally used on this yard is going to have different varieties in it so over time once you really start taking care of things you might notice those differences in the mixes and then at that point you may have some inconsistent color now for again for most people they could get their yard just looking good and looking good after you mow then that's fine but in terms of what happens here is we're just running into the genetic maximum of color of these certain varieties that we have some of them here just will never really get any darker than they are and they'll never really have the certain texture that maybe we want so that's really where we're at right now you'll see a lot of this lighter colored stuff in here probably some of the not so great bluegrasses there's some definite bluegrass in here this is bluegrass right here and then you get a spot like this and at first I thought this might be one of the better varieties of bluegrass but it actually looks almost nearly identical to what's in my front yard and then once you pull this back like this I pulled out one little piece but you can also see how the back side of this leaf is really shiny so that is what ryegrass why it's striped so well is because the back side of that leaf when it gets bent down like this is really shiny and it reflects the sun really well so what we need to do in terms of making this all uniform is probably come in this fall and do some overseeding. So I've showed that process on my channel before if you want to get a head start on learning about that but I think that what we're going to do is try to get a better mix of things going on in here so there aren't so many patchy color areas and make it all look more uniform maybe a little flatter too with some topsoil we're going to kind of decide on that soon and see what the renovation plan is going to be but get yourself thinking about that renovation a little earlier than you might even assume so we'll be talking about that soon and the renovation plan as well Back at the big project lawn today, and of course it's windy because it's windy every day, but I haven't been here for a while and things are actually looking pretty good for the most part. Major differences again from this year to last year. I know that some of this is still going to look patchy on the camera because there's a lot of patchy areas yet, but we're also dealing with fescue here, so it gets kind of patchy. It's not going to spread as much, which we're going to need to continue to do overseeding. But so far, the differences from this year to last are massive. Again, it was very important for us to get down a crabgrass preventer and that was done here earlier this year and I think the second app might have just went down as well or it's going to very, very soon here. Most of this back here when we were working on this last year was nothing but weeds and now we see a lot of grass in there, a lot of what we actually want to happen. So pretty impressive on such a large area lack of irrigation and we're just taking this thing sort of one step at a time. If you remember back from last year one of the things that we were struggling with the most is the actual soil that's here because most of it got scraped off and there really was not a lot of topsoil here at all. It was pretty much just a clay base. When we did our soil test there was not much of anything there for nutrients and so we've been working on that with compost putting down a lot of compost and I can definitely tell the difference in the areas that have, the compost has been the heaviest. So here's an area of basically the original soil that's here you can tell it's it dries out very quickly it rained here yesterday and this is already dry There's just not a lot of good stuff happening there so now let's go to an area where we put down the compost show you the difference so you can see the difference here in soil just what that compost has done with the layer that we did there so the change in color there's much more organic matter there and it's also holding moisture a lot better than that other soil so I can pretty much guarantee that this is a dog spot and that kind of gives you the color potential of the grass here. We just need a lot more nutrients out into the main area because of that soil lacking so much nutrient. That would show you sort of the color potential, what this could look like. Nice and tall here once we get everything going. It's still gonna take some time, but progress has been made. Got some tenacity clover. We could start to work on this a little more with your liquid. 
Yeah. Because you can just start spraying it more. Exactly. And, and once it's dry, it's done. You know, like there's nothing to run off. So. Well, I'll show you what I have. So this is the actual like liquid fertilizer. Mm -hmm. You were using the humic stuff before. Yep. We'll figure out a rough measurement of that front so we can kind of dial in how much we need to use. And then this one is like micronutrients and some iron and stuff that should make it like a little darker. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. So our plan for right now is just going to be to focus a little bit more on this front yard. I talked about that earlier in the spring. This area is probably the best looking area. You'll see sort of a line over here and you can see it on the drone footage too. And basically that's really where a lot of stuff runs off. So we haven't been putting a lot of fertilizer on there just to make sure it doesn't run off. But now that we're using liquids, we can spray it on everything. So we're gonna focus on sort of this strip going all the way down here roughly about 10,000 square feet. So we're gonna be using the 1648 liquid. So probably around 10 ounces per thousand, basically at that 10,000, we're gonna be close to putting down a gallon of this on this whole area and kind of switch that off and on with the lawn energizer as long as we're getting some water. If it, things get really hot and there's no irrigation on this lawn, then we won't be putting down fertilizer. So timing that with rain is kind of the plan. If we're getting rain and then we'll be putting down some lower doses of liquids, See what we can do on this area in preparation for fall stuff again. So that's the project lawn updates for now. I hope you got a sense of kind of where we were, where we are at this point and where we're going now. And definitely check out the videos from last year on sort of where all this started and how we made some progress on all of this stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.